Oh, hi guys and girls, Emma again. Welcome back to the spare room. And welcome back to another new project I didn't really need. A fellow YouTuber here in Australia got in contact with me and asked if I sort of knew anyone who wanted a launch. Watchmaker's laid. And of course I didn't. So we worked out a deal that I really couldn't refuse. So it arrived last night via long haul truck, own operator. I met him out on the highway and he passed me on a wooden box, which I opened last night and inside is this Lorch LL or Lorch L. I believe it's just a Lorch L model. Lathe from about 1905, 1908, 1910, something like that. It's well before World War One, And it's not in bad condition considering 115 years ago. This is a Lorch L. It's halfway between a, a Lorch WW or the, the Webster Whipkin style watchmaker's lathe, which was pretty popular and they were around in their thousands. And the Lorch A, which is the one that's over there on the other bench. If we have a look at the, the Lorch A tail stock, which we've got here, and the Lorch L tail stock, which we have here, very, very similar shapes and styles. Both started off in the same factory. This, of course, is a slightly different style tail stock than this one but this was available for this one and this one was available for this one. So just different models. But to give you some sort of idea of the size, this one's 65 millimeter center height, this one's 100 millimeter center height. The bed's not badly worn. If we put a straight edge on there, there's really nowhere if we put a straight edge on there, there's really nowhere that we can see light underneath. It might have a few dings in it, but it's not its not too badly worn. There doesn't seem to be any twist in it or anything like that, just looking at it. And I have given it a little bit of an inspection today. However, this sharp corner here is missing between the end of the headstock here and the rest of the bed. So this plate and the tail stock have run backwards and forwards on here a lot and worn out the corner. This wouldn't hurt to have a grind. Um, whether that's something that's easily done, I'm not sure. It's 500 millimeters long and finding a surface grinder that'll finish that's a bit difficult. If anyone wants a paying job, um, I'd be happy to send it. But it is pretty solid too, it weighs a fair bit. Probably not so much without these crazy eight inch high feet. <clears throat> this has a taper on one side and a square key on the other side. And it fits on these pieces up against here and the taper pulls it in when you tighten up the knob. The headstock's seen a bit of abuse. It's The bearings are somewhere between excellent and not too shabby. And the pulleys haven't got any dings out of them, which is good. The oil uh, covers are missing, the two little dippers for the oilers. And this is a very plain one. It's never ever been drilled and tapped here for the detent for the, for the index wheel on the back. These parts are all stamped Frankfurt AM, uh, Frankfurt am Main, which is the correct name for the city of Frankfurt in Germany. And that's where Lorch had the headquarters, but it's Lorch Smith & Co, uh, which made mostly watchmakers lathes rather than the big guy, which is F. Lorch & Co. This has been abused here. Uh, we have a look, it's been filed out because someone's run or ground out or something 
because someone's run this belt off the back where it's not supposed to. And I hope I can build this up somehow and and fix it, but I'm not all that confident. I'm really not sure how to do that. So if anyone's got any ideas how I could build that up, leave us a comment, get in touch. Probably there's a way to do it. It's good quality cast iron. It's just a real pity that that's been happened. Probably I can find another casting that I could use because there's a fairly, there's a few of them around still. But unfortunately, not usually in my price bracket. This headstock here is built to accept the 10mm launch collets. I have a stack of 10mm assorted collets, mostly Derbyshire, I think, and probably will adapt them to, to fit it. And if they look like they're going to, by making a, another another draw bar for it and it has a thread on the outside that looks to be about 20 by one millimeter something like that and of course we've got some weird thread standards happening here metric as a standard which we all associate with Germany didn't happen till about 1947 Whitworth, however, as a standard, and an international European standard, happened in 1846, which is 100 years earlier. And this thread here is Whitworth, absolutely, quarter-inch Whitworth with a quarter-inch Whitworth nut, and a quarter-inch Whitworth spanner fits it. So we can't ask for more than that. This one here is also Whitworth. It's probably 5 sixteenths Whitworth, something like that, quarter Whitworth it might be. And probably it's quarter because these parts under here would be interchangeable. This thread on here is metric. And this thread on here is metric. This thread here is metric. Uh, the threads on, they hold this together and the spindle are metric. And a lot of the threads on the on the compound, which we'll look at in a minute, are metric. This bolt down thread, though, is actually Whitworth. This is three eight Whitworth. There was no real standard, and this metric thread is actually Lowenhurst, which is Lowenhurst was recommended to the the VDI, the German Standards Committee, in. 1888 and 1896 it become a standard um, with threads included from one millimeter up to 40 millimeters. The difference between metric and Lowenhurst, though so nine times out of ten, is that Lowenhurst thread is 53.8 degrees pitch angle, whereas metric 60. Whitworth, of course, is 55, so there's some odd mix-ups there, and if you're aware of that when you buy a German lathe from years ago, you'll realise that that makes the threads a lot easier. It's a fairly interesting topic. Uh, Whitworth and Maudsley and Lowenhurst and the, the British Scientific Association and all those guys who got in and made instrument threads when things become, started to become smaller. This goes on here and it's not badly worn. And this piece here is very standard watchmaker laid here. It goes on there. And this nut goes on here and it should have a big flat washer on there but it never had one when it came. There was another piece that someone's adapted. We might have to make a washer for that at some point. This is the original launch tap fitting. Now, this slide isn't too shabby really. This top one's really, really nice. It's got a bolt here that needs a washer and probably some work. And this one's definitely Whitworth. It gives us our adjustment this way and this way. This slide feels nice too, but this screw has a slight bend in it. This screw has a slight bend in it, which is quite normal for a lathe this age, and that needs sorting out. This friction collar doesn't friction anymore, and it's kind of stuck probably because of the bend 
This here is also cracked on the T-slot that slides over this T-nut. This usually happens because someone bolts this down without bolting the, the plate on. So, unfortunately, the best way probably to fix that is to machine the lot off and make two angle plates to go in the corners and screw them in nicely and put some dowel pins in it and fix that. And then, of course, we've got to sort out the rest of the slide to get it up to standard. So there's a bit of work in that. Unfortunately, that's the, that's the worst part of the damage. And of course, that just was supposed to just slide on there like that and lock in place. This is the original tool post and most launch lathes of a certain age were fitted with this. It's quite a good system, really. Um, certainly good enough for most work, but I don't know where that's going or whether there's something we'd leave on it or what's going to happen with that. But apart from that, everything else looks pretty original and pretty nice. There's a 80 millimeter Bernard chuck, hasn't got the reverse jaws. Uh, it's probably a pretty good chuck, but we have to live without them. Overall length of the bed is about 500 millimeters. Height over the top of the compounds, not much. It's swing over the over the cross slide here is about 40 millimeters, and swing here is 125. So it's a machine that, if done upright, would be very, very, very useful to me. But I don't know when it's going to happen. I don't know to what extent it's going to happen. It really needs a dedicated bench. Generally, the belt runs through two holes on the base here onto about an 8 or a 10 inch wheel underneath that um, gave us the right amount of speed for fine work. And there was, of course, a million accessories available for this machine and probably more accessories are available now for the L than are available for the, the A, it seems. And certainly they made a lot more of them. Anyway, that's a quick look at, at the Lorch L. Haven't yet given it a name, so that doesn't really mean that we've bonded completely yet. But it's a machine that is capable of good, some good work and, and could be tidied up to do some good work. But it's going to take time and it's going to take some money to throw at it, and I'm not sure when that's going to happen. Anyway, if you've got a comment about this, if you've got some idea how I can fix some of this stuff, what needs to be done, this is quite a project to tidy this up and clean it up. It's quite a project to clean this up. And there's a few bits missing. We need a pulley for underneath and a, an electric motor system for that. Um, it's quite a job. If you've got any comments, any encouragement either, Give us, send, drop us a message or, or leave a comment. And don't forget to like and subscribe if this is the first video of mine you've watched. And above all, be kind to each other and particularly be kind to me because I keep buying things like this. And more soon, guys and girls. Music